Thanks for being here. So uh, as Barry just said, this is building tech for the non-technical. I'm Lori. Um, and I work for 10 Mile Square Technologies, which is a small firm just outside of the Washington, D.C. area. And we work with companies big or small to solve problems that they can't solve for themselves. And so this talk is about one of those problems. So we were working with a company that had two teams, a technical development team and a data team. And within the company, there was an analytics application that was currently in use, subject to lots of worldwide scrutiny, and about to fail under the weight of what they'd tried to cram into it. That was problem number one. Problem number two was that the system was a giant piece of functionality that spit out a solution. So you either ran everything all at once or nothing at all, and that wasn't going to work anymore. And then came problem number three, and this was arguably the biggest issue with the system. The data that went into the system was owned by the data team. The data that came out of the system was owned by the data team. What happened inside the system was dictated by the data team. But the system itself was owned and operated by the technical team, and that needed to change. So we went to work on designing a new system. The system had to work exactly how, how the old one did. So the data that went in needed to pro produce the same results when it came out that the old system had. But it could no longer be a black box. The data team needed visibility into what was happening at every step of the process. But that meant that the process actually needed to have steps. And finally, the system needed to be owned, operated, and updated by the data team, a non-technical, though admittedly very mathy, division of the organization. So we had a system, we had a set of requirements, a very clear customer, everything went smoothly, the project was over, we were good to go. You all know that's not how this worked. <laughs> and Interestingly enough, in this case, it wasn't the requirements of the data team that caused us problems. It was the technical team, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Step one, choosing the right tool for the job. So the developers knew that over time, the existing PL SQL functional functionality had gotten too big and too unyielding. Everyone agreed on that. But the developer's first instinct was to build a large JavaScript application that would do everything the old system had. And I'm sure you're wondering why that was their first thought, given all of the requirements that the data team seemed to have. But for the developers, it was easier, it was faster, and when it game, came down to it, they just didn't think that a da the data team would ever be able to own and operate a system with this much complex functionality. So we didn't start off on a great foot there. But we learned a couple important things. One, pick the right tool. We went with a tool called NIME. It's a visualization of algorithms that works on entire, entire data sets at the same time, and you'll see some examples of it later. And two, don't underestimate your non-technical resources. The data team wasn't filled with developers, but they knew how to use plenty of tools for their relatively complex job. They were fluent in things like Excel, they knew how to do SQL queries and UI tools like Navicat, and we needed to leverage that knowledge and comfort level to build something that they could pick up easily and be able to run with. Step two, the black box. Like it or not, one of the reasons we as developers are so valuable is because we make magic happen that no one can see. We throw some information in a little black box and out comes exactly what a customer wanted. Yippee! But for years, the data team had determined exactly what was happening in that black box. And since they were the ones who knew what should be happening, it just made sense that they had control over making that come to life. So we broke it down. We had to make it clear where the data came in, what happened when it was inside the system, and where it came out. And what we learned is that when you think you can't break it down anymore, try again. You can. Show this. Visual cues are extremely effective at conveying information and abstracting away technical ideas into process steps. But this was only the start. The biggest gains came in the workflow files themselves. This is nine. <laughs> Step three, leave breadcrumbs. So the, the technical team's idea of breaking things down was to write clean code with clear functions and labeling. 
everything we know as developers. And their instincts were right on. We just had to find a way to pull that out of the JavaScript world and make it work in the tool that we'd chosen. So if you're going to leverage what your non-technical users know, make sure to remember what your developers know. It just may manifest itself a little differently. What we built wasn't simple. It was a sophisticated tool full of fully repeatable closures, but it was incredibly accessible. Here are just a few of the things we did. Everything was built out in nodes. Every node had a function label, so you knew what the operation was. It had a data label, so you knew what data was being controlled in those functions. It had annotations and comments, and the entire visual display made it clear what was happening and how information flowed through the system. Make your errors clear. One of the hardest things about computer systems, which I'm sure we all still struggle with every day, is understanding what went wrong. We were able to put visually colored statuses on every node to make it clear which steps had completed successfully, which had failed, and which were still running, given the large amount of data we were working with. It took a little while. If you want non-technical users to own and operate a system, they need to be able to debug it, too. This helps them do that. Step four, focus on the goal. So the data team wanted and needed to own this system because they were in charge of the data. And at the end of the day, this was a data manipulation tool. So we took that to heart. At every step, after the functionality and transformation steps of every node, the entire data set was available for view in its new form. Share as much information as possible. Making the input and output of every step clearer make it easier and more obvious to understand what was happening. And in this case, it had the added benefit of the data team was able to make sure that what they thought they'd fixed the system to do, whatever new calculation they wanted to create, they made sure it worked exactly how they thought it did as soon as they tested it. Step five, be consistent. So all of these recommendations are important. And as the data team went through the workflows and looked at the patterns, they grew more comfortable with the system. But that only worked if things were done the same way every time. Developer A and developer B had to build the system exactly the same way, even if their calculations were different. And since there's five million ways to break down Boolean logic, we had to make sure they were following the same patterns. But once there was a pattern to work off of, it was easier for them to adapt that and make changes going forward. The data team was able to own the system, alter its algorithms, its calculations, and its results, exactly as we had hoped. Here we go. <laughs> Having walked through the project and our solutions to the challenges of non-technical system owners, here are a few of the main takeaways. First, take yourself out of the developer mindset. Don't build a fast node app just because it will solve the immediate problem. See the whole picture. Learn what your non-technical users know. Learn what tools they use. There are clues there of what behavior they'll be most comfortable with. And technical tools can be developed by other people, but you have to set them up for it, even be creative. This talk has shown you just a few ways that we did that. There are a number of lessons from this project, and I understand that they won't all apply to you. Some of them are big pictures, and some are smaller details that are kind of specific. But the hope is that many of the solutions we developed have parallels in work you do and see. Who doesn't want one less project for the engineering division to maintain and constantly update over the long term? And if you're interested in learning more about the whole system, I promise it's actually really interesting, uh, please come find me. I'll be around all day. Thank you.